Yo, I don't know what is going on with my phone. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I gotta get another phone for just for live. Cause this is ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Come back in, come back in. I'm almost done, y'all. Ah, the devil is a liar. I don't know what's going on with my phone. I'm gonna wait a minute. I'm gonna wait a minute. Hey, Miss Patricia, thank you for coming back in. I'm gonna wait a few minutes till everybody get back on. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I don't know what's going on with my phone. It cut off last night at the um at the fashion show. I don't know what is going on. I need a new phone. I got too much stuff on my phone. I think. All right, y'all, we are in Acts chapter 4, verse 15. Acts chapter 4. When we get done, y'all, I need y'all to share the first live and this live if you can, please. Um, I'm going to finish up right now. It, okay, y'all, y'all, back up. Hey, y'all, hey, y'all, hey, y'all. Thank y'all for coming back on. Thank you for coming back on. We're almost done. It says, Acts chapter 4, and we're um, in verse 4. 14, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 4, verse 14. It says, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then confer with them. What are we going to do with these men? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. See, that's what I love about God. When you talk about him and him alone and you let people know that it's only God that had done it, it's nothing they can say. They won't be able to deny what you have said. They won't be able to deny what you have. They won't be able to deny it. It says we cannot deny that they have been with Jesus. When you let the people know that I got all this that I have is because of Jesus, they're going to be like, it got to be Jesus. We can't deny it. You got to know. That you got to tell people about Christ. You got to let them know that it ain't you that's doing the work. It is God and God by himself. I can't do this on my own. I can't raise these kids on my own. I can't take care of this house on my own. I can't take care of my job on my own. I can't take care of this thing. I can't take care of my mother and have to be a caregiver on my own. It got to be Jesus. It says, everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading, see, the enemy want to stop you from blessing people, stop you from getting your blessings. The enemy want to stop you. It says, but to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people. What? Are you sharing the gospel that much that people want to stop you in your tracks? Come on. It says, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. You going to stop me from speaking to people about Jesus just because everybody's starting to believe in the miracle signs and wonders and believing in the word of God? You want to stop me from saying anything about God? Because everybody in Jerusalem now know, everybody in Delaware now know, everybody in Chester now know that Jesus is the one. That you, you can see change is coming and it's only because of Christ. It says... Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied. Somebody say, but they replied. They like, we not shutting up. I don't care if you lock me up over and over again. I'm not shutting up. They had already let them go. And now they called them back in again and said, which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to Jesus. You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Somebody say, I can't help myself. I got to let everybody know that it's Jesus and Jesus all by himself. They said, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. I cannot help but speak about how God has blessed me, how God has covered me, how God has saturated my children with his love. I cannot help but speak to tell you how he has healed my body. I cannot help but to speak how he helped me get through school, how he helped me get my degree, how he helped me get my business, how he helped me go through school. I cannot help but to let you know how he has blessed my mom and how he has covered my children. I can't help but to let you know that I don't have all this by myself. I got it because of Jesus. He said, I can't 
can't help myself. That's how you gotta be. You gotta be so excited about God. You say, I can't help myself. I gotta tell you. I'm not gonna listen to you. I don't care how much you try to stop me from talking. I gotta let you know that if I win, it's because of Jesus. And if I lose, it's because of Jesus. Whatever it is, it's all God. Or nothing at all. <laughs> whatever the circumstance, whatever the outcome, it's all God or nothing at all. Cause I can't help myself. That's how you gotta be. It says, at, after, I'm in Acts chapter 4, verse 21. After further threats, they let them go. Somebody said, they got to let me go. They're going to have to let you go. They're going to have to let you go. They could not decide how to punish them. Because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. On their release, now I'm going to read all of this. I'm going to read all of four, all, all of chapter 4. But I want to go straight to chapter 5. Because I want to I wanna finish this today. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people. And reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said. You made the heavens and the earth and the sea. And everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Acts chapter 4 verse 29. Now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. No, I'm sorry. Verse, verse 29 says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. Do you see how small their prayer was, but how powerful it was, how they pinpointed every area that they were dealing with. And they went from the word of God saying that he made the heavens and the earth and the sea. They like, you are the God that made everything. You are the God that covered it all. You are the God of everything. If you're that God, then why are you letting the, the, na the, the kings rule over the nations? Why are you letting them do these things? Why are you letting them band together? And then they go on to say, with the, uh, can you enable your servants, which is us, the apostles, enable us to speak with speak your word with boldness. They 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 let him know who he was. They told him that he's the God of all things. Then they asked, and then they asked for his boldness, and then they asked him to stretch out his hand because you're our holy servant. So you gotta be willing to just, just you gotta pray simplistically. You don't gotta pray long. You don't gotta pray, you gotta have all these great words. Just tell God who he is. Tell him your story. Tell him your problem. Tell him your situation. And then say, because you're God, help me to be able to speak to the thing that I'm having a problem with. With boldness. With great boldness. And guess what? The room that you're in or the situation that you're in, it'll be shaken. I, I, I'm, I don't know who I'm talking to. But this is how... Uh, I don't even know the word to say. This is how um, confident you have to be. You have to be this confident in the word of God like... I already talked to my God. I already know who he is. He already know who I am. And I asked him and he did it. Just like that. It says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and the word, and spoke the word of God boldly. This was the second time that the people were now filled with the Holy Spirit after the Pentecost. This was the first time after the Pentecost. They were all filled the first time. And now they were filled again. This was a, another group of people that were now filled again. It says, verse 32, all the believers... Now, these are the believers that were not believers at, when they were in the temple, um, the, the temple gate. And they all, when Peter and John went to go pray, and all these Israelites was in there, they were all Jews. Once they seen that the man was healed and he could walk, they all then started believing in Jesus Christ, over 5,000 of them. Now, these same people that 
went from being a lover of Moses, the God of Moses, to now a believer in Jesus Christ because of Peter and John giving a testimony about Christ. Now, let's talk about this part. This, is, this part is so amazing. It says, verse 32, Acts chapter 4, verse 32. It says, all the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. Come on. I know I talked to you all about this before, but I just want to remind you again, just because now we read the whole chapter. That once you believe and your sister believe and your cousin believe and your uncle believe and your aunt believe and your uncle and your aunt and your sister and your brother and your cousin didn't have a lot. And because you do, now we're all one heart and mind. We all believe the same thing. We all believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose for our sins, that he bled for us, that he rose again. Now he lives inside of us. If we all now believe that, why are we all, some people are struggling and some people are living good. We should not be, it should not be that. We should all be doing well together because we all believe in a God that is almighty. A God that gives all things to all people. If we all are all one heart and one mind. It goes on to say, from time to time, those who own land or houses sold them. Every now and then, they'll sell their property. Brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to anyone who had need. Oh my gosh, I know a lot of us are real estate agents, we got it going on, we got all these houses and properties and buildings and all this stuff, we own blocks and all that. But every now and then from time to time, we might see a group of people that's not doing so well, we say, you know what, I'm going to sell this property and give the money to the organization that can help all those people. That's what it's saying, it's a philanthropist, that's what a philanthropist does, they take some of their, some of what they have and take a big chunk of it and give it to the place or the charitable organization that needs help. That's a philanthropist. It says, Joseph, verse 36, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, you know how um, you can see on TV when T.D. Jakes is preaching and they go and place this, the, um, the money while he's preaching at his feet. That's where that comes from. And they're placing money on the pulpit while he's preaching. That's what that is. They're placing money at the at the feet of the apostle because with great power that's working through TDJs and the word of God that's working through him, that's blessing your heart to help you help your family and help those around you. They place the money at the feet of TDJs because he has different ministries that's helping those that are in prison, helping those that are in needy, helping women that are in abuse situations. He's taking the money to do things in the community, even in with, um, with businesses, you know, he's helping leadership programs. T.D. Jakes is not keeping that money just for himself. He's doing things to expand the kingdom. He's helping people enlarge their territory through the works of him doing the work of God. That's why you see people throwing money at the pulpit. If you never knew that's what it meant, that's what it is. They're throwing money at the apostles' feet so that the money can then be distributed to anyone who has need. So don't say, why they giving money to the churches? Why they throwing money at the feet of the man while he preaching? Why they doing this? Why they doing that? It's in the Bible. That's the word of God. They laid the money at his feet. Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit. He had great power through God. And God is using him to teach the word. Let's go on. How much time I got? I got eight minutes. I got eight minutes. Listen, I'm going to teach this verse, chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verse 1. I'm going to verse 11. It says, Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. Now this was husband and wife. With his wife's full knowledge. His wife knew everything. He kept back part of the money for himself. Now he wasn't like Joseph. Joseph sold his um, field and Gave all the money to the apostle. Put it at his feet. But Ananias and Sapphira, they knew that they were going to go get the money for the property that they had and keep part of it. But brought the rest and put it at the apostle's feet. 
Now the property probably cost $100. They kept 50 and then gave the apostles 50. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? He didn't even have to sell the property. He didn't have to do nothing. Nobody made you sell your property. You chose to sell your property. It was already yours. But you want to act like you want to sell it like you showing off. See, that's what people do in the, in the church. They show off like, yeah, I got it here. You can have it. I, I got you. Yeah, whatever. You showing off. But then you go back to the pastor's study and say, can I get my money back? After you done show it off in front of the whole church. No. It says, after it was sold, was it the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to human beings, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. He didn't even get an opportunity to even go back and say, wait, 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 wait. Let me tell you what I, well, I did. It. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. He didn't get an opportunity to say anything. Soon as he heard what Peter said, he died from lying. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened to her husband. Peter asked her, tell me. Now she got a clean slate. She got an opportunity to tell the truth. He said, tell me. Is this the price you and your and Ananias got for the land? Did you really get 100 or did you really get 50? She said, yes, that is the price. Now, we know she had full knowledge of what her husband was going to do. But she had an opportunity to say, no, that's not the right price. I don't know why he would do that. She said she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They believed in Christ. They believed. Why we know they believed? Because... They did what the other believers done. They was selling their properties and laying the money at the feet. So we know she was a believer. It says, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. She didn't get an opportunity to explain herself either. You know why? We're not going to always get an opportunity to explain herself. You got to stop lying. This was not in the Old Testament. We know that God's wrath was different in the Old Testament. This was in the New Testament. The Spirit of God was so heavy that on Peter and John that if they even lie in their presence, they was dying. That's how heavy the Spirit of God was on their life. I don't know if you're a liar that's on this line today. But if you always find yourself telling a story or making up a, a story for no reason or lying and you know that it's a story, you got to stop lying because you're killing yourself spiritually. It's no need to keep lying. God already knows your story. He already knows your truth. You got to be honest. They died immediately. She didn't even get a chance to say sorry. You're not going to always get an opportunity to repent. What if you die before you repent? What if you die before you ask God for forgiveness? What if you die before you ask your mom for forgiveness or your cousin or your sister or your brother? That's why we have an opportunity every day to wake up to change your life. We have an opportunity every day to get up to say, I want to be different. I want to make a difference today. Every day you have an opportunity to get up and change. She had three hours to change her mind. Three. It says... Acts chapter 5 verse 10. At that moment she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young man came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. You can't say, I love the Lord. Oh, God is my Savior. I love him. He knows my heart. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the bright and morning star. He is the lily of the valley. He is the great resurrection. He is awesome. And then you start lying. 
And then you start stealing. And then you start cheating. And then you start conspiring. And then you start having motives. You can't go from loving God to always doing things of evil. You got to stop doing that. We got to change. You got to change your heart posture. I'm telling you. You're going to die in your sin. You do not want to die in your sin. That's not why we're here. We're here to study, to learn, to teach somebody about God and then go forward. They went from not knowing Jesus Christ to loving Jesus Christ to then lying and then dying. That's how fast it, your life changed. They didn't even go another day. It was all in the same day. You went from selling your property out media courthouse, going to get the money, got the check, cash the check, go to church at the second service. And say, oh, I got my money. I'm going up to the front. I want everybody to see me get my money. I bet I put my money at the feet of the apostle. And then go sit down and, tell, and laugh at your wife. Like, ha, ha, they thought they got it all, but they ain't get it all. You're dying every single day when you constantly making up stories in your head. And then you tell somebody else to conspire with you. Stop bringing other people into your stuff. If you got issues, deal with your issues on your own. If you got problems, deal with your problems on your own. Whatever you're dealing with, you got to deal with that thing on your own. Don't let me die with you. Or you know you wrong. This woman did not have to die. But because she loved her husband so much, she didn't love God more. He said, I'm a jealous God. And I let no one go before me. I will not, not, let, not let you love no one else more than me. She loved her hus husband so much. She will let herself die. It's 8 o'clock, y'all. I love y'all so much. It's 8 o'clock. I hope you received the word today. I hope you continue to study your word. Every day you have to read a scripture, a, a chapter. chapter from Acts and a chapter from Psalms. We are on Acts chapter 21, going into, um, we're going all the way to 50 days. If you go to my Facebook page, you will see um, the scriptures that need to be read all the way to 50 days to the day of Pentecost. We will have a service on Sunday, the day of Pentecost, which will then, um, we will be dead, done all of our scriptures. Then we'll be going on to um, another chapter. So next Sunday, we'll be studying Philippians. However, next Sunday is the pageant that I'm in. I will be preaching as on next Sunday at 6 a.m. If you can't get on at 6 a.m., set your alarm today. Set your alarm today. I'm going to come on at 6 a.m. today, and then I'm going to go prepare for the pageant um, at 2 o'clock. I'm going to be at the pageant at 2 o'clock. I'm going to be on stage at 2 o'clock. If you cannot be there, please start praying for Rashida. Please pray for me. I am going to try to win the crown for Mrs. Pennsylvania. I'm so excited, y'all. It's so outside of my league. However, God has put me in a place of uh, um, uh, unfamiliar territory. And he's enlarging my territory, y'all. God is blessing me. I'm getting to meet so many people. And being on another platform that SGS Ministry can be a part of with um, with Feeding the 4,000, with the community cleanup, with um, the clothing giveaway. We can be um, doing so many great things with our community service being attached to this platform. So I know that it's outside of ministry. However, it's, it's something that God has gave me that I can use for the kingdom. So I'm so excited. And if I don't win, I already won. I'm Mrs. Chester 2023. And I already won because I am your favorite minister. I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. So, I'm claiming the victory. But next Sunday, I will be on at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Then I'm going to prepare. I love y'all. Please share this live. And please let somebody know that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he still lives. Let's pray. Most gracious children, Father, we bless your holy and righteous name. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you so much for the opportunity to hear your word. Father, we thank you so much for Peter and John being able to just to teach the word of God and being able to not be afraid to teach the gospel. Father, allow us to have that same boldness inside of us that when somebody asks about us or asks about what is happening to us, what is changing us, what is making us um, look different and sound different and walk different, let us be able to be bold enough to tell them that it's not us, that it's you. Father, we thank you that we will not lie no more, that we will not gossip no more, that we will not have motives, God, that we will not have um, device schemes set up by the evil one. Father, we will not do anything that's not like you, God. Father, we I ask you today that if there's anybody on here that do not know you in the part of their sins or that they do know you and just trying to just reconnect back with you, God, that they're trying to reinstate themselves, that they're trying to get back into the fold. God, that you give them another opportunity, God, to just be able to be with you again, that they can be back in the fold with the sisters and brothers of Christ.
Father, I thank you so much for Sisters Growing Strong Ministry. Father, I thank you for allowing us to be able to continue to study your word and to be able to un unclog our ears, to massage our hearts, that we might continue to receive the word of God. Father, those that are dealing with any sickness, any financial issues, any problem with their family, God, I ask you to apply the blood of Jesus right now on it. Father, I ask you to saturate it with your love right now. Anybody that had tears right now, that is dealing with any suffering, God, that's dealing with any abuse, any, any addictions, God, I ask you to change it right now. I, I apply the blood. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus right now over it, right now in the name of Jesus. Anybody that's dealing with loneliness from death of a loved one, God, I ask you to plead the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus over their life. I apply the blood on their situation right now. Anybody that's dealing with worryation, any anxiety, any hopelessness, any doubt, God, we apply the blood of Jesus on it right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. God, we thank you, we love you, and we honor you. Father, anybody that's on here that do not know you in the part of their sins, if they just believe in their heart and confess with their mind, that Jesus is Lord, we know that they will be saved. But if you just repeat with me, if you just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, and I believe you came to earth, and I believe you died on the cross for me, and I believe you shed your blood for me, and I believe you rose from the dead. Right now, I come to you, Lord Jesus, because I am a sinner. Forgive my sins, cleanse me with your blood. Make me clean, and I will be clean. Come into my heart. Save my soul. I no longer belong to Satan. I belong to you. I am forever yours, and I am now saved. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, y'all, if y'all can't come to the um, pageant, I forgot. You can buy a ticket for $35, and you can get a live link, and a link will come to your phone. You'll be able to see the pageant on your phone. Please. I'm going to put it on my page today, how to get to the link so that you can um, purchase it so you can see. I would love for all y'all to be on there. I would love for y'all all to be on there. I was trying to sell like 50 tickets. I sold like 30, 35, something like that. But please get on. I love y'all. God bless you. See you next Sunday at 6 a.m. Please share this live. God bless you.